This is Jonathan Agoff here for Pro Boxing Fans. Finally joined by Lawrence Acoli. Um, most importantly, a world title shot's finally confirmed uh, December 12th. Um, what's the last sort of few months been, considering we've known this fight's going to happen, but you've just been waiting for a date? Um, what have they been like? Yeah, has it been, has yeah. it been difficult maintaining focus throughout? Um, I say, you know, fortunately, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of good fighters in the gym um, with McGuigan. So, you know, throughout lockdown, I was helping, um, you know, Chris with his upcoming fights and then coming back and then, you know, being, you know, in the gym just a few days a week and, you know, being able to get a gym set up in my house. I've been able to stay in relatively good shape. Um, so now when it's time to start a camp or I've started a camp, it wasn't a crazy shot to the system. You know I mean, so when the fight was agreed, I'm already in good shape. So it's just about, you know, um, pushing on to the finish line. It's just your 15th professional fight and you're going in for a world title. Do you think you deserve a bit more credit sometimes than you sometimes receive going in? You know, this is Anthony Joshua had 16 fights before he fought for a world title. So you're really going for it early on in your career. So what you're saying is if, if I'm able to win, I've won it quicker than Anthony Joshua. Yeah, in less fights by I'll one. Take I'll take it. I'll take it. But yeah, in, in all seriousness, though, um, I feel like, you know what, with this victory, they'll, you know, and just with time and um, wins, the credit will come. But the most important thing for me isn't about credit or pats on the back because I've seen people, for example, Lemachenko, you know, win and be called the greatest boxer ever to take an L and then it will come crashing down. So for me, you know, the plaudits and the respect and stuff is nice. It's good for your ego, but my ego is already big enough that I don't really need it. So for me, the most important thing is wins. Glowacki is obviously a two-time world champion. He wants to get his belt back. Did you watch him growing up? Because he's been in, around for ages. Um, is he someone you've admired growing up? Uh, I don't know about admired, but he's someone that I've obviously known and, you know, respected. Um, you know, I think when... I was in Hackney having no idea what I was going to do. You know, in 2015, he was winning a world title. So, you know, um, you know, for me, it's more of a credit to myself, I think, that I've been able to turn my life around in such a, in such a um, quick fashion, you know. And it's time to kind of put, I don't want to say the cherry on top, because it's not over, but I start putting a little bit of icing on, you know, and uh, it's shaping up nicely. So, you know, massive respect to him, but it's, it's coming to an end. I mean, he's got a lot of experience, as mentioned. Are you? Is there any concerns that he has this a lot of pedigree and experience that he might be a bit too experienced? Or do you think you're getting him at the right time? Yeah, I think it's a mixture. I, I've watched him at his best, and I believe I beat him when he was winning the world titles. So that version of him, I believe I beat. The version that we see we, in his last few fights, I believe I beat. Um, we don't know what this rest has done to him. You know, he's had a long time to rest. Think about what he wants out of life and I expect him to come hungrier than ever, stronger, fitter than ever. Um, but ultimately, you know, all that experience against people who are not me. Yeah, all that experience against yeah. people who, who aren't me. So he might have had a hundred fights, but he's never boxed a Lawrence or Cody. Do you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see how he copes with the range, the athleticism, the, the, the youth, the determination, you know, um, He's got a lot of attributes, but there's nothing that's that I believe is out of this world, you know, that I'm not, I'm not going to know how to deal with, you know. Um, he's not, he's not, yeah, anyway, we'll see. Uh, did you watch his last fight against Maris Breedis? It was controversial, um, but it seemed when Breedis put the pressure on him, he seemed to struggle a bit. He went down. Do you think that's the type of fight you'd look to implore against him? Uh, it's hard to say because obviously um, me and Bradis are different different fighters and um, Graki might have learned from that fight. But, you know, one thing that I do believe is that um, he, he he's shown to be sort of an on-top bully fighter, in my opinion. Um, so when he's able to land those, you know, hard right hooks and swing them left, left over to the head and body, you know, and sort of, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to call him dirty, but, you know, rough house tactics and, you know, rough his way to the victories. Um, I feel like when you've had people like, well, the only one that's obviously won, although it's controversially, is 
pray this once, you know, shots land, you know, he, he fills them. Do you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see how he does with my sort of um, punch selection and power. With sort of the landscape of the division right now, you've got Bradis, probably the standout name at the moment. Um, are you looking to make an emphatic statement with victory or is it just any means possible to get this world title? Um, of course, it's nice. Like I daydream and visualise an emphatic victory and the first, second round and all that. But ultimately, the most important thing is winning, you know. But I, I generally can't see this fight going 12 rounds. That's just that's my personal opinion. I feel like um, it's just it's, I I can't see it going twelve rounds. Not because of the fight um, that he's just had, because I, I kind of put onto, I, I don't watch that fight. I watch other fights of his. You know, him versus Cunningham, him versus Marco Huck. You know, um, he's more recent ones. I can't remember the guy's name, but the light heavyweight that moved up. And, you know, to, in the in the World Super Series, um, the fight he had before Braders. So I watch those, and those are the, those are the fights that you know allow me to see what kind of fighter he is, you know, and, and what to expect. Um, obviously, fighting on the same card as AJ is. Have you spoken to him about this world title shot? Has he given you any advice at all? Yeah, but I, th- I think it's difficult because you know I'm I'm open for advice and I soak it up, but ultimately, like I'm not the type of person that needs that confidence boosting that passion like, mate oh, come on this is your world like, you've got it's just I'm just matter of fact like I expected to be a world champion from the Olympics like even after I, I did a medal in the Olympics I said to myself no nah, by 2020 I'm winning a world title Corona happened the world pandemic I thought oh no it's not going to happen but you know what December 12th I had my opportunity to prove myself right from back then you know and I make some bold statements and hopefully I'm able to prove them right as well. Um, just a couple more because I know we're running on time. Um, if you are to be successful, there's obviously potential unifications. You've mentioned before about moving up to heavyweight. Um, do you see that as the next stage? I mean, what do you make of this super cruiserweight division? Is that something you might look at? Um, uh Oh, uh, yeah, moving up to heavyweight, sorry, first and foremost. Yeah, I believe that's something I do. I feel that, for me, it's, it's all about progressing, progressing, and progressing. So, you know, I've gone the, the traditional route, Commonwealth, British, European, now Worlds. God willing, I'm able to win that. It's, OK, unify, face another champion that is also either undefeated or, you know, is, is, a, is a champion that says, you know what, I'm coming with my nation, with my belt, put up against yours, let's see who's who wins. And then coming through those kind of fights, it's then, all right, cool, well, now I've showed I'm the best at 200 pounds. Let's move up, whether that's the 220, whatever. Um, but that's only the WBC. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how it's incorporated. But, um, you know, that's the opportunity to maybe even be a freeweight world champion, you know, before I'm retired. Like, I'm still relatively young, you know, 27 now. So, I, you know, I still have anywhere from, you know, five to eight years left, God willing, you know, in the sport. So it'll be interesting to see how I develop. Obviously, uh, Usyk moved up to heavyweight. We saw him against Derek Chisori. He came in for some criticism um, and people are unsure how he's going to fare against the elite of the div- the division. Having watched that, um, how do you think he'd fare against an Anthony Joshua, for example? And do you look at that and think you'd be able to compete at heavyweight what what does it you think it takes to compete at heavyweight moving up from cruiser um obviously i spar a lot of heavyweights and i've sparred a lot of the world top, the top ones um you know i think obviously physical presence and strength and power is of course like at the top skills pay bills everyone knows that you know but ultimately you know there's a point where your size and skill kind of like it has to it has to sort of match if that makes sense like of course, it's always going to be difficult when someone has a weight advantage, which is why it is a weight advantage. But ultimately, I think you need to have physical strength and power as well. Otherwise, heavyweights would just kind of try and move the top ones anyway. If it, if it gets to the point, um, just talking on Anthony Joshua versus Uzik, if Uzik is somehow manoeuvring and whatever else, all it takes is like, it, we don't know yet, but in my opinion, all it will take is how AJ approached round five against Klitschko, which is, you know what? 
just forget this boxing thing, let's have a tear up. And then I don't think Uzik will be able to have a tear up with a heavyweight. It's just it's not possible. And it's also very difficult to keep moving for 12 rounds against top heavyweights because they're sinking the shots to the body. They're, you know, um, able to get hold of you and do a, a little bit more clever stuff than Derek was able to do. And Derek gave him a great fight. Mm. So you think Usyk would ultimately get stopped? Well, by Asia, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so if you if you moved up there, do you think it's just the fact you're quite physically big, um, you know, sparred these heavyweights in the past, do you think that would enable you to hold your own up there? Yeah, I think that, that would put me in good stead. You know, it's obviously very different with 10 ounce gloves on compared to the nice, safe environment of sparring, you know. So um, there's definitely a difference and it's not something called rush, like, yep, I'm cruiserweight champion, I'm just going to dive straight in with, Whoever, do you know what I mean? You have to respect this weight division for a reason. Do you get where I'm coming from? And I, I'm, I'm, I'm very realistic. As much as I'm confident in myself, I'm realistic with my capabilities. Do you know what I mean? So I know someone like Uzek is probably, not probably, is definitely more technically proficient than I am. So he's able to jab, move and slip this way and sit down. Where I'm much more just on a physical, like I call, land a solid jab, land the right hand. So I wouldn't, I would have to train differently for heavyweights because I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, jab and pick them up. I'm going to have to have, a, have, have to get their respect as well. So it'll be interesting. Um, but obviously most important is winning December 12th. Yep. Just lastly, a message for the fans tuning in for this big world title fight against Glowacki December 12th. Yeah, just um, thank you for continuing to support, you know, all the people that, you know, believe that I could get to this stage. Thank you, and, you know, I'm looking forward to proving you right. Thanks, Lawrence. All the best.